Go ahead and get the game started. Where is my PNG? Sounds fine to me, but I don't know if it's loud for anyone else. I don't remember what was going on last time, to be completely honest. Okay. Okay. Uh, Cairo. <clears throat> Let's see, to start, what would you like to drink? Uh, Cove, I'll have an orange soda. Noted. Um, water. Uh, no lemon. I don't like lemons in my water. Taste is weird. Um, also, sorry if you guys can't hear me well because of like the background noise. It's like 70 degrees in my house. It's probably hotter than that in my room. So I have all my fans on. Uh, Kyra placed an order for your drinks, getting a black hot coffee for herself. It didn't take long before they were brought to the table and set in front of you. Took a long sip of your drink as you looked around the restaurant. Your small group checked over the menus, deciding what to order. The last time you came here, the dish you ordered was amazing. You wanted to order something different this time. Kyra and Cove didn't need any encouragement for this. They were totally focused on the information in front of them. Soon the meals too were ordered and the menus taken away. And the menus taken away. You glance at the table surface waiting to figure out what to say. Cove looked like this was the very moment he had been dreading, sinking further into his seat and crossing his arms. His sour feelings today were unignorable. Instead of asking more open questions he to brush off, Kyra Kira had mercy on her son and instead put her focus towards you. So, uh, how to pronounce it. Uh, what's a few things you're into? There's got to be something for you, something you do for fun. Just to know that you're not buried in school assignments. Um, I forgot this was an option. For those who can't see, the option is I'm really into Cove. I'm not going to pick that. Because I don't want to. Uh, I picked up uh, reading fictional books, sorry, for those who can't see. I'm not going to. Uh, me too, nothing beats growing up with a good book. And I go to the beach, surfing. Uh, 
Uh, oh wait, do you two go surfing together? That's what the question was. Harvey looked at Kovic secondly, who mumbled something not non- non-communal. I don't know what that says. And looked away again. Uh, swim. Uh, you must be a strong swimmer since you're so close to the ocean. I find the water a little scary, but I still like to dip my toes in sometimes. I spent time studying. Studying in the summer, I have to admit it. I don't know a lot of people who enjoy that. But hard work is the key to getting what you want in life. Uh, I like to... I'm gonna say nothing else. Okay. Thanks, I'm happy to learn uh, more about you. I cannot hear the voices. Hang on. So much that I had heard, Cove leaves the details out. So what exactly did Cove say about me? Kyra laughed, holding a hand in front of her mouth. I can't tell you that. Uh, yeah. Sorry. But, um, I can't tell you that. I didn't come all this way to embarrass my son. Too much. Kids are delicate at this age. She laughed again, and you glanced at Cove to see his reaction. He gave her a dirty look, eyes narrowed into thin slits. Hoping it would clear uh, some of the tension and the air you said to ask Kira, Kira a few questions of your own. Go ahead and told you much about her, and you were curious to know more about this woman who played such a big part in his life. What exactly do you do for work? Uh, I'm a traveling writer for magazines and things. I keep people in the loop on what's worth seeing. It's good work. Wow. Um, what do you like to do? Uh, spend time with my little boy, of course, and traveling. What a shock, huh? Uh, where do you live normally? Uh, Nevada, have you ever been? You shook your head. It's a beautiful place. Check it out if you can. So I can ask her if she's in a new relationship. Or why her and Mr. and, uh, Cliff got divorced. I have never asked either because it felt like that was not my business. I mean, it's still really not like my business, but you know, we can ask if we want to be, but it's only, I think it's only one or the other. I can't ask her both. Sorry, I'm messing with my mic. But, um, we can pick one or the other or pick to choose to say neither because it's not really our business. I don't remember how old we are in this stuff. Uh, I think we're like teenagers or something. So it's not like there's like some... I don't know, teenagers ask these... I, I don't know. I don't know if people ask these questions. I'm gonna choose not to for now, because it just feels strange. I don't know. Uh, it didn't seem to bother that the conversation dropped off. Cove sipped his soda angrily, slurping up the remaining drink with furrowed brows. He looked ready to run straight out of the restaurant. Uh, you weren't sure if coming along had ended up making the lunch better or worse. So I can choose to fuck with them, or like just leave them alone. And I don't mean like action mess with them, I can like choose to interact with them, or just like leave them be. Like making faces at them or flicking uh, straw wrappers at them. To me, the straw wrapper one's funny, because, I don't know, to me there's something funny about flipping straw wrappers at people. I don't actually know if people find that amusing, but I do. Mm. 
a bit too much to wrap her. Uh, the rapper hit Cove on the nose. You had to bite down on your lip to keep from laughing. It was settled, she swore you could you could see the hint of a smile tilting at the corner of his lips. Uh, Kyra, you two seem really cute together. Cove covered his face with his hands and leaned back in the seat. Ugh. Mom, why did you why would you say that? Uh, I can be bothered by it. Just get embarrassed, laugh, or just say thanks. We are cute. Uh, Guess it doesn't really matter. Or at least I don't think it really does. I'm just gonna do this one. Kyra, very. Uh, your meals were delivered shortly after that, and everything was so delicious, even Cove enjoyed his food. Kyra, now that we're all full and content, can you explain, please, why you've had a bug up your butt all day? Cove's face instantly returned to its scrunched form. Kyra, seriously, baby, what did Mom do to make you this mad? I haven't even been around a full day yet. He gripped the edge of the table, refusing to make eye contact. The words he spoke were barely audible over the over the din of the restaurant. Could have told me. She leaned forward, not to miss anything else. Eyebrows raised. I told you what? Uh, he finally seemed to find his voice and spoke the thoughts that had been on his mind. Cove, that I wasn't going to visit you this year. That you're going to be coming instead. Kyra, didn't you invite me? You wanted me to be here with you. Cove's eyes began to shake. His frustration ended. Cove, I don't. I do want you to be around, but I didn't know it'd be like this. It's not the same, and nobody said anything. Kyra, I see. Her expression grew tense, and she, she threaded her fingers together and placed her hands in front of her on the table. Kyra, we've both been gifted another Clifford surprise. Referring to that as a Clifford surprise almost caused both you and Co to crack a smile. Uh, you also had no idea his name wasn't just Cliff. Over five years, nobody had ever called him Clifford until now. She smoothed her hair out, not letting go of her stern look. The more things change, Cove, the more they stay the same. They let out identical sighs and smiled weakly at one another afterwards. If I can go home, Cove, and set up a normal trip to my place before the summer ends. Cove's lips tightly, uh... Cove's lips tightly closed together. He seriously pondered the option. Cove, I... Cove, I think I want you to stay. I miss it when you're not here. Or you're not there. Uh, Kyra, my heart. She reached across the gap, grabbed his face, and planted a kiss on his cheek. Cove tried to wiggle away. Mom, stop. Kyra, I'm sorry. Sweet young men need to be smooched by their parents. If I don't, they'll take away my mom license. Uh, Kyra was completely... Completely in, uh, in post by Poe's admission, though a tone of seriousness did return to her voice when the, conti when the conversation continued. Uh, do you want to talk to your dad, too? No. Uh, Koba snapped the words instantly, but reeled back his annoyance just as quickly. The music slowed up the voices. Bring that down. Uh, maybe later. Not today. I understand. We can show it. Thanks, Mom. Thank you for talking to me, little mister. She grinned affectionately at him before turning your way. And thank you. Huh? What did I do? It's easy to act like a baby with your mom. It's harder to keep that up with your neighbor watching everything. Especially when you really care about what said neighbor thinks of you. She winked. Uh-uh. She just 
just ruffled his hair with a laugh and moved her hand down to tap the end of his nose. And that's how the issue was resolved, at least between Cove and his mom. The three, when the three of you left the restaurant Kyra, and Kyra had paid the bill, you walked back to your neighborhood slowly. You had eaten so much by that time. You were beginning to feel sleepy. It didn't help that the lunch had happened late and the sun was already beginning to descend from the sky. But eventually you reached your street. Someone was there to greet your group upon arrival. So, welcome back, family. And us, of course. Cliff. Dad. The two walked past him into the condo without sparing another word. Despite the summer heat, their shoulders were cold. Uh-oh. I'm in trouble. He rubbed the back of his neck with a crooked smile, but his eyes were as soft, were soft as uh, he looked after them. Yeah. Uh, he's so much like his mom, don't you think? You gave a vague nod, not really sure what he was expecting you to do. He nodded back, far more energetically. Okay, have a nice night. You too, Mr. Holden. With that, Cove's dad is here to join the others inside. It was your turn to go home now. Summer hadn't started off at all what you would imagine it would have, though it turned out to set the tone well. Having Kyra in the neighborhood was a new experience not only for you, uh, and Cove, but also both of your families, in a dull moment was rarely had. Alright, I'm gonna save here. These are... all of my choices. Oh, those are that I don't have DLC for. So, we have 10 choices. Um, I don't know if we'll get through all of them today. But, um, we can certainly try. So, if there's any in particular, mm, some more, alright, we'll do that one. Uh, you sat at the window watching the scenery pass by as your mom drove down the quiet streets at a leisurely pace. A singer crooned sweetly from the radio, turned low enough that you could block it out if you wanted to. You turned away from the window and your mom suddenly spoke up. Uh, well, kids, are you excited to be going to the library? Uh, I guess. You don't sound so sure of that. Mom wasn't wrong. It was what it, it was, what it was, but your real interest lay elsewhere. There hadn't been a time when you were super excited to go to the library. Uh, what about you, Cove? You're part of this conversation, too. Not really. If I didn't have school stuff to do, I would have probably be elsewhere. I get it. I wasn't so keen on the, on the library in my day either. Cove, really? Uh, well, no. Unless you count under, unless you count, you count under six year old, six years old as my day. She grinned uh, over at the two of you briefly. Mom refocused on driving, humming along with the radio under her breath, even back to staring outside. As you passed one street, you caught a glimpse of someone in brightly colored clothing, passing out balloon animals. It sparked a faraway memory and you felt your lip twitch up before you consciously remembered why. How long ago was it when that how long ago was it that you and Cove watched the amazing Alexander perform magic tricks? Uh, Cove waited and then you took the moment to elaborate. Alexander you the amazing Alexander gave us the dolphin balloons for free. At this reminder, Cove smiled faintly. Uh, oh yeah. I wonder if he's ever there now. Maybe we should go more often to check. Maybe. That was the first time we ever went down to the street together, I think. I miss my balloon. He was a good dol dolphin for that one afternoon I had him. Yeah. Hey, Cove. What were you going to name your balloon? You never told me. Oh, uh, I don't know. I can't remember what kid me was thinking, probably something obvious like Flipper. Uh, you couldn't, 
You couldn't help the way your own smell crawled up higher at the sentiment. You wanted to say something else, but couldn't quite think of what, so you just settled back into your seat. When silence filled the car again, you returned your attention to the window. It was an absolutely gorgeous day. You leaned your face into the sunshine, tempted to close your eyes as the gentle ray rays warmed your cheeks. Uh, yeah, huh? You lifted yourself up a bit more, seeing your mom twisting her torso to face you, infused from the front seat of the car. Next to you was nothing. The pub's door was already open. You had reached a destination for you even realized it. I was asking what time should I pick you two up? Um, oh, um, four should be okay. That gave you, that should give you enough time to finish your summer assignments or at least make a large enough den. Thanks, Mom. Uh, you hopped out the car, remember to grab your backpack at the last second. Alright then, have fun, you two. Yeah, fun. Your mom snorted, but you couldn't. Uh, but you couldn't help pouting a little. Beautiful afternoon like this, and you were going to the library to do homework. The two of you went right to the door of the library, both reached it first, and tugged it open, stepping inside. Then the car opened so you could pass through behind him. Uh, the air was much cooler inside the building than it had been a few seconds you spent out outdoors. The space was filled with the soft din of papers being moved and whispered voices. Uh, hey, you seem kind of distracted on the right here. Um, just enjoying the day. Cove looks dubious at the vague answer. Okay. What? Don't you think it's nice out? I do. Your study buddy was standing in front of the library by a long rack of magazines. Predictably, he was flipping through one of the various sports players on the- with the one- oh, flipping through one with- Various sports players on the cover looking intense enough to burst off the page. His head snapped up when you walked over, beaming widely. Hey! Hi, were you were you waiting for a while? Not super long. Derek put the magazine back in its place, then he gestured to a space at his side. Most of the tables were empty, only a few people leafing through books. Uh, there's plenty of room. In an unspoken agreement, you, the three of you started moving towards the seating area, Derek taking two steps. Uh, for every one of Cove's. Guess what? I'm pretty sure I've mastered the fake shot. I'll show you some other time. Derek looked over at the gate, looked over the gauge and levels of interest. Do you know it? Um, soccer's not really for me. All the sporty stuff Cove liked was beach related surfing, snorkeling, uh, bodyboarding. He never played, uh, games that involved working on a team. Even volleyball had been one on one. How does it go? Uh, Derek's eyes flashed with an excitement as he explained. Well, you move the ball, uh, like you're going one way, then you demonstrate by running a few steps ahead, showing off some fancy footwork, and then you do it like this, so it, oh, so it does it like that. You laughed, bobbing your head at his attempts to get the trick across with no ball. Shh. The third of you looked over at the checkout desk. The librarian stood behind it, was wearing a deep frown. You mouthed sorry and she sighed before turning back to the book she was reading. Derek scratched his cheek, choosing to not let that derail things. So, what are you guys working on? Uh, what weren't, what weren't you working on? Uh, there were some things you had to get, had, had, there were some things you had not start with. You had yet to start a single assignment, and you had, you had yet, oh, because you didn't feel like it. There were some things you'd got to start with. But it was still early in the summer, so there were so there was uh, a lot left. Um, I think I'm gonna work on a history assignment. We had to do this timeline thing. It made more sense to work on that while you're here since you probably need to consult the reference books. Uh, there's some summer reading too. I have to go through yes, an assigned book. I'm gonna do that later since it doesn't need extra references or anything. What about you two? Uh, I got a few worksheets. They look pretty easy, but my school gave us three books to read. Can't they just stick with one? Uh, I'm also doing the timeline. Uh, you found a table close to the top, close to the top bookshelf, and set up camp. Within seconds, pencils and folders and books were strewn out on the surface. 
uh, you need to take this opportunity to finish your work, otherwise you'd be struggling to get everything done on time. Check the requirements on the homework sheet your teacher had given you and opened up your textbook to the pages you needed. Some, t some t After some time, Co sits in his sheet, twisting his back as if he was trying to work knots out of it. Feeling cooped up? Yeah, I'm gonna get up for a little while. I could've. That's what I usually do, but I'm gonna try to not. Uh, okay, I'm gonna stay here. I'm making good progress. Uh, I'll come with. Might as well take the opportunity to refresh yourself uh, before getting back to work. The two of you strolled away from where you'd been working. Your eyes roamed over the title, the titles of books as you passed. Some were dull, some intriguing, and others were just strange. But you didn't spot anything that made you pause and pick it up. Looking for something? No, but something might catch my eye. You never know. I might go. I might go out of here if there's enough time. This comment reminds you of the clock ticking away. Even if you finish your work for the summer, the countdown for the school year would still be on track. Uh, before you know it, we'll be back in class. Yeah, we just got out, and it's almost here again. Are you looking forward to going again? Coke gave you a weary smile. No. I still never want summer to end. He uh, wistfully let his gaze go distant. He wrapped an arm, his arms around himself. He weren't sure if it was his longing for the beach or the concept of summer itself. Uh, summer means you can do what you want. I wish everything wasn't always decided for me. I'm gonna grow up already. Cove didn't feel safe knowing it was others who really determined life was like you understood that much new classes new teachers new people it's too much he raked a hand through his hair before brightening up but if we but if we got get to be in the same class that'd be cool i'd like that uh a smile spread across his face crinkling his eyes uh what about you do you want to go back to school already uh I don't know. You hadn't let yourself consider it much. There was really no getting away from the topic of school right now. It prompted you to think back to the classes you were in. You pursed your lips. Um, I can choose what classes I like. I guess liked. Or I could choose to not like any of them. Hmm. Or, yeah. It wasn't mandatory at your school, but you definitely hope to practice, participate, and that's it. Uh, each loss in your own thoughts, you can stroll through the library a little while longer until it comes your attention again. You should probably head back. Yeah, let's go. If we could take a step back, Pope clears throat, avoiding your gaze. Thanks for listening before. Anytime. Pope smiled, his cheeks pink. You jerked your head towards where Derek had been left studying. Time to get back to work. You and Pope rejoined with Derek and settled back in as quietly as you could manage, and work continued as normal from there. The sound of shuffling dragged you out of your head. You looked up to see surprise to see Derek packing up. You're done? Derek casually shrugged, which said he felt proud to be the first finished. Uh-huh. Told you it wasn't anything hard. Uh, what are you gonna do now? He wondered how Derek was gonna spend his newfound freedom. Uh, I could look up what you're doing. Maybe I got some tips that'll help. Mm, nod. Uh, with a smile, Derek leaned over your part of the table. He took some time to get the gist and point you in the right direction before turning it back over to you. Uh, Derek leaned back on speed. Alright, okay, I'm gonna look around while you guys finish. See ya. Bye. See ya. Later on, Co shifted in his seat, closing his book as he looked over the notes he had taken. Glancing away, you contemplated on what you've done thus far. You'd finished most of the assignments. You weren't sure if you'd done it correctly, but it was progress. Derek's advice had made it easier in the end. Uh, are you about ready? It's almost four. Yeah, I think so. Come on. Both of you gathered up your books and returned the ones you'd used for references 
to their proper shells, set off Robert Derrick and wandered off to. He was in the biographs section. Uh, his back was to the two of you when Hannah booked his head. The others brought him something to show that he strained to grab one of the books. Hey, Derek, we're ready. Oh, okay. He glanced through the sound of his voice and towards the shelf he was trying to reach. Uh, you want me to get the librarian? Uh, um, nah, it's okay. I just want to flip through it anyways. Then the third of you moved to the front of the library to wait for your, uh, rides. You sit close to the window and let out a content sigh, feeling the rays, uh, rays warm you from the slightly chilly library interior. And just stare at the space. The change of scenery was refreshing after so long at the same table. You watched the wind trickle, tickle the branches of a sycamore tree, making the leaves quiver. Oh, that's my dad's car. Derek lifted a hand to wave, pushing the door open, and head towards the blue pickup truck waiting in the parking Talk lot. Later. See ya. Bye, Cove. Uh, watching Derek jog off before scanning the area for your mom. Lost in thoughts. I feel like I need to come back to the library again before the summer's over. Uh, I'll come with you. I still have those books to read anyway. He smiled at the idea, despite not uh, working on the same thing, it'd be nice to have some company. I'm good with that. Uh, hey, do you want to do something with me after this? Oh, sure. Cook seemed eager towards the uh, towards the offer. You hadn't exactly expected them to say no, but the agreement still made you happy. Two of you smiled at each other. Wasn't long for you spied your mom's car coming down the road. Oh, there she is. Time to go then. You climbed in the car, sighting your usual seat and buckling and buckling of belts. Hey kiddos, you get a lot done? Yeah. Nice. Uh, the cove sh or the car, the car shifted into action and you watch as the library shrunk into the distance. It wouldn't be the last time you saw it this summer, but at least you knew you were going to have company. Uh, you fielded questions from mom while you tried to juggle a conversation with Cove. When she learned you two were planning on returning, she immediately offered to give you a ride next time. Continued to answer mom's questions about what you've been working on, told her about your plans to stick with Cove after getting back. Soon enough, the trip was over and you'd arrive back to your neighborhood. Cove had run over to his house real quick to drop off the stuff. You also made a pit stop to put your backpack away before heading out again. Two of you were grouped in the middle of the road, halfway between your houses. With everything wrapped up, you could you could now freely enjoy the rest of the afternoon. Your conversation resumed as you both began uh, walking down the street together. Uh, the afternoon came and went. Dinner was eaten and you were cleaning up the dishes left uh, behind from it. Cove had a life to save for the meal today. He, uh, he passed uh, you a couple plates to run to the sink. You only didn't have to. Cove asked to do at least something to help. He scrubbed the last of them and let out a satisfied sigh. Okay, they're done. I'm gonna go upstairs now. You address your guests for the evening. Uh, are you gonna come with me? Uh, yeah, I don't have to go back till later. Uh, take it easy, kids. Thanks for your help. Uh, when you got back to your room, you noticed your backpack from Early, you figured it would be best to keep, kept, to keep. It would be best to unpack the stuff you needed before going to bed. Cove plopped down on your desk chair and spun on around a bit as he got comfortable. He watched you contently as he walked across the room he didn't need or it took you, you to try entertaining him constantly. It was just nice to be near each other even with nothing going on. You hefted your bag onto the bed and it sunk into the comforter. With that, you sorted through the books and paper packets. Not all the thing, not all of it were things you were going to need anytime soon. A small pile of most important assets began to grow on the side of your backpack until you had gone over it. You had actually finished flipping through the contents, but it wasn't all. But that wasn't all of your work. Singly pulled uh, the opening closer to you and peered inside. The second look. Uh, commenced, then a third, then you began to open the smaller pockets. You were missing your history assignment. At this point, Cove could tell something was wrong. That part of your summer work that you had gotten done now was gone. 
It hadn't been noteworthy before, but the bag wasn't really zipped when you uh, first began to look through it. It would have fallen out somewhere and you had to, if you had in the first place. You're upset by the revelation, you made yourself calm, panic, all you do is shrug, stress levels up, try to think positively, and felt paralyzed. Mm. I feel like panic is the only... is what most people shrug. Okay. It was pretty lousy to lose something, but it wasn't the end of the world. My history work isn't in my backpack. At your word, Coke jumped out of a seat. Oh, crap. Is there somewhere we can look? The bag was found open, so... He went sympathetically. That left a lot of options for where it might be. Most of them bad. He resolved to check the spot where the backpack was originally left in. Couldn't hurt to look with nothing in sight there. You extended to search the rest of the space. Coke did his best to stay out of your way while keeping an eye open for your missing work. It was a fruitless effort. Your assignment wasn't here. Uh, let's check downstairs at might slip in your house someplace. Fine. How are you? Uh, well, hello again. Is everything alright? Uh, I just got, I unpacked my bag and one of my assignments wasn't there. Oh, sweetie, I'm so sorry. What's missing? An assignment for school from the library today. Mom raised an eyebrow with, cons with concern at the answer. That's a pickle. I'll call right now. I think they might still be open. Uh, thanks. You're welcome. Just leave it to me. Code, honey. Can you tell us if there's anything you uh, notice here? Uh, yeah. I saw the assignment when had when we had it out in the library. I don't remember them putting it away, but I'm pretty, sh I was pretty positive there's nothing left on the table when we were done. He spoke re resultly before now. He had considered that something might have been left behind. You had felt the same way when leaving, though it was hard not to second guess things now. When your mom re entered the scene a few minutes later. The look on her face was not promising. I got a hold of one of the librarians. They don't have any papers with your name on them. Not that they can see anyways. I'm sorry. Okay. Thanks for trying. Of course. Sorry it was a bust. It's not your fault. Okay, let's go over to my house. I can check in my bag. Maybe I took one we were packing up and didn't notice. Good idea. Things were heavy with your mom's here with your mom's worrying. Maybe he needed to get away from it. Or maybe he thought you needed a chance to get away from it. Let's go. Hope nodded and made the way to the door. Oh, your mom stood by with priest eyebrows. Take care, kids. Good luck. Bye, moms. Briskly made the trip across the street. In less than a minute, you were going in through the through the threshold of Cove's house. Cove had been in a rush earlier today, too. His backpack was tossed on the couch without thought. No one had moved since. You can sit down or anything. I'm gonna look. He lifted up the backpack and unzipped it in a fluid motion. You were left to wait as you rooted inside uh, with an unexpected level of seriousness. Uh, this is actually starting to get to you now. You hadn't, you hadn't wanted to make this into a big deal, but if you didn't find it, you'd have to do everything all over again. And if you weren't able to get it, if you weren't able to get it done again, a f not formed in your stomach, you leaned closer, trying to take a peek into what he was seeing. Every second of not knowing made you more tense. Your impatience didn't go notice. He tortured the contents rapidly until Cove's eyes drifted from the open bag and traced the length of the floor. His arms were still tucked away inside, but the search was over. Your heart sank. It was obvious there wasn't much chance Cove somehow had it the whole time. Still, you wanted to hope. Finally, Cove lowered his backpack on the floor while slipping his arm out. He wasn't empty-handed. Cove had sent a few papers on it your way. Here. His, uh, your eyes flicker down to the assignment, then right back to his face. That's your copy. Uh, in the almost silent room, you could hear the crinkling of papers as his fingers gripped tighter. His expression was just as firm. Now it's yours. Uh, I can say thank you, say I can't take it from him. Uh, I appreciate wanting you wanting to help, but that's okay. That's cheating, are you sure? And I can only stare. Pretty sure, yeah. The assignment and grades, they're important to you, and, you know, you're important to me, so. You flatly dropped the papers at your feet, refusing to meet your eyes. I did pretty good with it. The mark shouldn't be bad. Uh, hugged. Without another thought, you threw your arms over his shoulders. The papers scattered. But after another second of motionlessness, 
can return the gesture and wrap himself around you. It was too much of tear, tear droplets began to sting your eyes. Please don't cry. He didn't let you go as he began to speak again. Missing an assignment is something that doesn't bother me. I mean, you've known me long enough to see what does upset me. Uh, Cove chuckled bashfully. You imagined that he was talking about the small stroll down memory lane to all the moments he had been vulnerable with you in the past. He leaned his head into you affectionately. Then a moment of interruption. The moment was interrupted by the piercing ring of the Holland home phone. We wordlessly stared at one another with raised brows, Cove's mouth formed into a tiny frown. Cove appeared from the hall on the far side of the living room, summoned by the noise. Cove robotically took his arms off of you, bending them securely against to his side against his side instead. He didn't know if she, if she noticed or cared, but he was embarrassed. Hey Cove. Hi. I didn't know you were here. Uh, she struggled on past your eyes following her. Cove's mom answered the phone, giving a chipper greeting to whoever was on the other end. You uh-huhs and uh-hums. Later, Kyra, Kyra thanked the person who placed the phone down once more. Uh, that was, uh, your ma. She said your stuff was, your stuff was in the car. Really? Uh, that's what I was told now. I'll just return to the guest room. You can have your privacy. Cove's face cycled from shock to sour as his mom made her escape laughing. A shock, uh, he shook the interruption off and refocused on you. I've got it. Um, uh, relieved. He was back. You had your work and that's what mattered. I've got it. Cook smiled crookedly and shrugged one shoulder. We should probably head to your house. Your mom might want to talk to you. My parents really care about me. And he kept searching even after you left because of, and because of that, it all worked out. Cook not in agreement. Means a lot. She stuck with me. Thanks. Brighten up sparkling eyes. Sparkling eyes. Anytime. While stepping to the door, uh, there was a thought in your head that you knew to be true. You were going to be there for one another when uh, it came to big things and when it came to small things. I don't know what I'm looking for. I don't even know if I'm actually looking for anything. Okay. So, on the contrary, we might actually play some more of these and then play uh, another game. Because, um, my dyslexia is really kicking me in the butt. So, I don't know if reading this out is going to be something I'm going to be able to continue doing. So, we might play some more of this since, after all, that's what was voted on. Um, but we might change. But these are our choices now. I don't know if this is picking me up well. I keep moving it near me, and then I can't see, so I keep moving away from me. Um, we're gonna do this one. Uh, early one afternoon, you found yourself in the living room with your family. 
Uh, it was another one of those summer days where it felt too hot to go outside, but it was too uncomfortable to do anything inside either. The air conditioner was cranked up as far as you could negotiate it, but everyone was still being pretty lazy. You, your moms, and your sister were lounging around while the TV blared on in the backdrop you ignored by all of you. You specifically were... sitting on the floor. Uh, you looked out the windows at the backyard, not that there was anything particularly in uh, particular interest to watch. Elizabeth broke the silence with a loud groan. You glanced over and she was lying on her back over the couch, massaging uh, her cap with one hand. Ugh, I felt terrible. I'm dying in this house and my legs hurt. Mom looked up from the magazine. She barely been flipping through and frowned concerned. Uh, could you have strained them somehow? Elizabeth flailed briefly, then flopped onto her side with a heavy sigh. I don't know, it just hurts. Oh, sweetie. Mom got up from her seat at the kitchen table and walked over to your sister. She put a light pat on, she did a light pat on Elizabeth's shoulder sympathetically. Uh, I'm sorry you had to deal with that. Maybe it's growing pains. You could be getting, you could be taller by next fall. Elizabeth scoffed. Uh, she didn't look impressed by Ma's assessment. I'd rather be my height forever than deal with this. Mom walked over to leaning against the back of the couch. Kids, they grow up so fast. Soon Elizabeth will have a home of her own, maybe with a nice husband and some kids if she feels like it. She sniffed loudly and wiped at her eyes. She could tell it was just, just a bit. So she her head, even though you knew Elizabeth liked guys, it's hard to match with a boyfriend or a husband. She only seemed to invest in hanging out with her friends, not chasing after boys. Mom must agree with you because she shook her head. Let's not exaggerate, she's still practically a child. But if you do ever, pers ever do pursue romance, Elizabeth, you can come talk to me about it. Definitely, well, always willing to lend an ear. Elizabeth's features contorted in disgust. No way, I'm not talking to my moms about that. Mom's jaw dropped and she gasped in, in, in an exaggerated display of shock. Her hand came up to rest against her chest. Mom only grinned. She didn't look offended by Elizabeth's quick response at all. It really wouldn't be so bad to come to us. I know what it's like to have a crush on a pretty boy or two. I don't, but I can listen anyways. Mom snorted at uh, her own joke while Ma burst into giggles. They were having a little too much fun at Elizabeth's expense. Elizabeth certainly wasn't feeling amused because she rolled her eyes and sat up. I'm going back to my room. I'd rather melt alone, thanks. She strode off towards the staircase, taking a step or two at a time. Your mom stared at her, then turned to look at each other with raised eyebrows. Oops, looks like we scared her off with all the romance talk. Oh well, we'll get her next time. You watched them... Uh, titter with some surprise. Obviously, your moms liked women. We had no idea that Ma liked guys, too. Today was the first time you heard her say something about it. Ma, I always thought you liked ladies. You like guys, too? Ma turned to you, happy to bring, uh, happy to bring you into things now that you'd spoken up. She smiled and nodded. That's right. I like both. Uh, I like your, but I like your mom most out of everyone. She's special. Uh, Ma's smile turned all soft in the corners like it usually did when she looked at her. She pinched Mom's cheek lightly. I don't know why the frame, the term she's special is like, I mean obviously like there's positive ways to say somebody's special and then there's sarcastic ways to say that somebody's special and I can't say I can tell which one. It's trying to imply here, but I'm going to assume it's not sarcastic. Uh, Mom reached up to cup uh, a hand over Ma's. Even when Ma stopped pulling her cheek, their hands remained clasped together. Uh, thanks, Lonnie. I think most women have charm, but no one can hold a candle to you. Uh, Mel. Ma beamed and kissed Mom on the cheek she'd been pinching before. <laughs> uh, sweet. Smile to yourself at the sight, no matter how often your mom's expression expressed their feelings for each other. It was always nice to witness it. Mom looked back at you, letting mom's hand go with a brief, brief, brief. Sorry. Uh, 
know, she settled down next to you and mom followed soon after. You know, I'm also here to listen to you whenever you're ready. That offer isn't just for Elizabeth. She bumped her shoulder with yours, reassuring a smile in place. There's no rush, of course. You can take all the time you need to figure out what or who you want. Uh, don't think you have to stick with whatever you come up with right now, either. Life's nice like that. It can change and you can learn. Mom nodded in her agreement. Two of us are happy to hear you out and we may be able to relate better than you think. We still won't push the topic, at least most of the time. She gave Mom the weakest scathing look possible while being unable to stop grinning. Um, I'd rather pass. You don't have to worry about it. You shrugged. You nodded silently. Thanks. I'll think about it. Good. That's all we ask. Mom let another exaggerated sniffle in it take a genius realize it was fake. First Elizabeth, now you. Do you have to grow up? Mm, yes, children tend to do that from time to time. Uh, your parents quickly grew absorbed in their conversation about rearing kids. You took that as your cue to leave, getting up so you could spend some time alone in your room too. They let you go without problem. So you made your way up the stairs. You let it aside once you stepped into your room. It was just swelter as sweltering in there as it was in the living room, possibly even a little warmer. You couldn't even open your window since it was hotter outside and you just let the AC out. You dragged your feet as you crossed the room. You checked the, your current sweltering conditions in the mirror as you passed by. Uh, you thought back on the conversation we had downstairs about growing up and all of that. After a moment, you slipped a little closer to the mirror. You stared at it, then turned away from the surface, looking down at yourself. You were definitely growing all right. It was weird thinking about how you were now uh, in comparison uh, to you, what you were when you were younger. It came to your body. It was getting some muscle definition, was chubby, was slender, was heavy set, was sort of scrawny. Sorry, your head still facing forward. It's been giving you a self-evaluation from this viewpoint. Uh, intersects. Mm. Simply flat. And that's just the way it was for you. Uh, you ran a f your fingertip over your birthmark. It was something that had been consistent for you. Took a step back, finishing with your impromptu inspection. You locked your eyes with your reflection, cocking your to the side, all things considered. Didn't look too bad. A small smile tugged your mouth. Sure, maybe you wouldn't be a model or anything, but you weren't half bad. Shook your head roughly, putting the thoughts of what you were turning into out of your mind. This wasn't the time to focus on such things. You had something to do, find something to do in this heat. You shuffled over to your bed, collapsing onto the mattress. Your brows scrunched up in thought. Time passed slowly into your annoyance. Possible ideas of what to do were you and far between. You weren't sure how long it had been, but eventually you heard your mom's uh, your mom call call you from downstairs. Um, there's a call for you. Code wants to come over. Is that all right? You perked up at the words sitting up in bed. You yelled back there immediately. Yeah. You got to your feet and headed downstairs, eager to see your friend. You need to go downstairs soon, anyways, because your stomach was empty and it told you it was time for lunch. Uh, just as you reached the bottom of the stairs, you saw mom put the phone back on the receiver. Uh, she glanced at Ma, leaning her head against the kitchen counter. Here comes trouble. We better prepare ourselves. Ma clicked her tongue and cleared his approval of Ma's words. He's such a good boy. Who never wants to cause trouble? He can be a bit thoughtless and impulsive. Uh, I, oh, I know. He's very sweet, but that's what makes it uh, more of a problem. If a stranger or some kid from school was egging uh, on to behave badly, I think we both agree that, that they do the right thing in the end. But if Cove got into a reckless uh, mood and wanted us to be a part of the ride, can we really be certain they uh, what call they'd make then? 
Uh, yes, I think so. Tokiko helps Cove settle down. Uh, he would have gotten himself in even more trouble without them. You have a point. Look, all I'm saying is that I haven't forgotten that time when they were kids and Tokiko chased up the Cove once he ran away. Ma just left. She turned away, still snorting her eyes, not yours. She blinked in surprise and waved at you with an easy grin. Uh, Mom looked over, noticing you at the foot of the stairs at will. Oh, that makes sense. you come down already. I just wanted to let you know what was happening. Mm, I can choose to pretend I didn't hear the conversation or call her out on it. I'm gonna choose. Meaning, meaning, my mom will catch track about the two of you that are not sitting on mine. I'm set to pick the very best one. You are not a dirty or a shrink. Well, if I hadn't come now, then I wouldn't have heard everything you said. Ooh, you got caught, Pam. What? You were saying things too. I didn't say anything that I wouldn't have told Tokiko directly. Oh, you were unbelievable. You shook your head at your parents, even though you fought a blush for remembered what was just being what had just been discussed. Alright, alright, you got me. I'm sorry for being so gossipy and saying things about your friend. I can be bad too. Well, we'll get out of your way. Mom sighed and mocked defeat and made her way down the hall. Mom followed her with a hushed giggle. Now she were alone in the living room, tasked with waiting for Cove. I was just fine with you. Uh, if it hadn't been so hot outside you would have waited you would have visited him at his house a long time ago. Took a seat at the kitchen counter and settled for the wait, as expected, there was a knock on the door a few minutes later. <sighs> you got up and answered your neighbor was standing on the other side. He came in once you stepped aside and let him pass, giving a little wave. Greet him as you typically did. I don't care. Uh, he groaned and wriggled in your arms like a fish out of water. Stop, it's too hot for this. You didn't take pity on him, you knew he was kidding. If he really wanted to get out the hug, he would have done it already. Eventually, you let go, smirking to yourself. All right, I'm done. Hoof sighed and wiped his at his face a bit. You noticed the, the sheen of sweat across his brow. He must have been glad to be back in the air-conditioned place, even if he only walked across the street to get there. Is something going on? Why'd you want to come over? I didn't want to do anything. I don't want to. I don't want to do anything. Not when it's like this. He just vaguely the humid air hanging around. I thought I could at least do nothing with you. Um, that made sense. Uh, you might have done the same thing. Uh, have you had lunch yet? I was gonna do it soon. Shook his head. I haven't really felt like eating because of the heat. I probably should have had. I should, probably should have lunch. I didn't have breakfast this morning. Uh, yeah, I get like that sometimes. Uh, my parents don't like when like it when I do that though. Mine don't either, the last fight ate here when I go back home. Uh, as one, you headed into the kitchen, you crossed your arms, you glanced around, wondering what, um, you should scrounge up for a meal. I don't know anything that's warmed up. Is there anything cold or not cooked? Yeah, after a bit of back and forth, the two of you concluded that you should raid the fridge and cabinet in order to make sandwiches. That settled you, uh, plan to the side on the outside layers first. Bread, white bread, wheat bread, sourdough, mixed grain, gluten-free, and eggs. Uh, you reached for the mixed grain, then made your decision. The white bread. Uh, you pulled the white out the white bread too, settling setting both items on the counter. Uh, then you decide to set what direction savory it's lunch. Something savory would make the meal. Ham slices, turkey slices, da, 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 da. I'm just gonna pick because it doesn't really matter. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, mustard, mayonnaise. Uh, the two of you bustled around the kitchen opening and closing things in order to collect everything you needed for your individual sandwiches. Focus intently on assembling your own for the most part. When you were close to being done, though, you glanced up at your neighbor. Go was putting the sandwich uh, together delicately. Uh, his brows furrowed and tongue sticking out just barely. 
there were open jars of peanut butter and honey near his plate, as well as banana peel. So he was making a peanut butter, banana, and honey sandwich mixed uh, on mixed grain bread. Uh, Sounded great. You'd have to maybe you'd uh, you'd have one yourself a different time. Curiosity uh, stayed sustained. You turned to your plate and finished your own creation. By the time you were done, COVID already cleaned up his workstation. Turned his and he turned his face to you, studying your sandwich briefly. Small, sm small, small tug at the corner of his mouth. You guessed it. Uh, it didn't at least look inedible to him. Done. Yeah. Cool. Uh, he waited as you quickly returned the ingredients and cleaned a few utensils. And two of you uh, collected your respective plates. You both agreed on heading upstairs to hang out in your room. You and Phil entered your bedroom while balancing the food on plate, something fell, so it was a trip. Uh, Cove took a seat on the ground, stretching out on the hardwood floor in an attempt to keep a bit cooler. Mia looked at a big bite of sandwich, chewed, then hummed happily. The sandwich is really good, at least at least that's something. At this point, you sat down and started on your own sandwich. Uh, you nodded. Obviously, you were a pro at making sandwiches. Uh, he leaned back on his hand, while chewing and glance around as uh, every moment, every movement seemed sluggish. Want to do something? It seemed the plan of not doing anything at all had already been despite his lack of enthusiasm. Uh, like what? He rolled his head back, looking at the ceiling. Uh, what about Tic-Tac-Toe? Uh, sure. Uh, you put your plans aside and pulled out some markers and scrap paper. You laid everything on the floor. Uh, he scooted back to make more room in front of you. Uh, Kof picked up one of the markers with the right hand, keeping half a slice of a sandwich in his left. Uh, I want to be X's so you can go first. I think that's fair. Yeah, that works for me. You prepared to note down your first move, your marker hovering over the paper. I can pick? Oh, after the first round, you were about to take another bite of your sandwich when I thought it occurred to you. I wonder if anyone turned off the TV downstairs. Hmm? TV was on earlier, but no one was really watching it, but everyone started leaving the living room. I don't know. I didn't turn it off. It might be downstairs. There's no one there. I smiled crookedly at that. Poor show. Playing with no one to enjoy. What was it? Um, he squinted off in the middle, into the middle distance, trying to recall the show's name. I feel like it was some, it was some kind of crime-solving drama? Uh, Cove nodded sleepily, his eyes closed and opened again with some effort. Uh, if you give him any specifics, maybe I can guess. Mm, well, you rested your chin on your open palm groggily, thinking as hard as you could. I remember there was a, a woman with long blonde hair, I think. She was one solving crimes, like as a detective or something. And there were scenes at a police station because someone got arrested. You lapsed into silence, both of you thoughtfully, then Cove, Cove chuckled. Wasn't that funny, but you joined in the laughter anyways. I don't know what that was. What that is. Uh, me neither. I just saw it. Uh, another round came and went and grumbled as he readjusted himself. His feet started twisting more and grimace. I feel so stiffy. I'm gonna be stuck to this floor forever now. Uh, looks like we're both stuck here forever. When we're gray and old, we'll still be right here. Yeah, we'll have to accept- we have to accept our fate. You giggled under your breath at such a bizarre scenario. Go practice smile as you as well, then you return to the game. Not letting you win. Cuff spoke up more, catching your attention. He was peering down at the piece of paper between you as expression thoughtful. You know, Tic Tac Toe is such a weird name for a game. What does it even mean? Uh, maybe because they played with ticks and tacks? Over the skeptical brow, you bit back a laugh and feigned seriousness. I mean, it makes sense because they probably didn't have paper markers back then. What about toes? Couldn't say anything about that. He had there, with no answer to be found, you returned to the game. As point, Kobe finished the sandwich. Yours was almost one, two. Now you're ready to push. You brought up to your neighbor's phone. Go downstairs to get some drinks. Wasn't about that, too, but I really want to get up. Me neither. You look over at him, narrowing your eyes with false suspicion. But hey, what happened to you not being able to get up ever again because you were stuck to the floor? I still, it's still true. I mean, we're not actually going, are we? I only thought about it. 
He rolled your eyes and dropped the issue defeated. Code grinned a little of disappointment over his victory. It's a draw. It's a tie. Were you out of it? I know I didn't try hard. <laughs> he smiled at you in a amused way. Uh, somehow you weren't surprised with that, despite Code being the one who suggested the game in the first place. Sir yawned his hand coming, coming up to cover his mouth quickly. Transition to a, to a small smile. I understood why, yawning as he just did. Uh, when, as he said he was feeling uh, disinterested was kind of a funny coincidence. Uh, you laughed. I laughed. Cove just grinned and flopped onto his back, leaving his mark on the floor beside him. You stayed seated looking at your friend as he stretched himself out. You're really tall now. Cove snickered a bit at the random topic. He propped himself onto his elbows to meet your gaze. Why are you even bringing that up? You shrugged. It made perfect sense uh, to you to bring it up. My moms were talking about me and Elizabeth growing up, getting bigger and stuff. What kind of stuff? Well, mom really likes women. Mom likes women too, but not just women. Yeah. Since the two of you were engaged in the conversation, Cove got back into a seat seating position. Uh, brought and brought he brought up a knee up and rested his arm on top of it. A wistful expression overtook his face. I wonder when I'll know how I feel about that kind of thing. You don't know? Coach shook his head. I heard at some point you should start liking types of people, guys, girls, whatever. No. But I haven't. Nothing's changed. Maybe I have to grow up more. Maybe you don't have to like anybody. Maybe you just like all types of people. That's normal too. Cove seemed appreciated at the thought. The smile hat that appeared on his list was any indication. What about you? Who do you like? Turn his attention. Mm. I'm just gonna pick. Yeah, separating. Oh, I'm not really sure how we ended up talking about this all in all. We started, we were just playing tic-tac-toe. But it was good, I think. I think so, too. Cove chuckled a little bashful, glancing around, clearly scrambling for something else to say. Uh, so, have you learned anything interesting recently? Yeah, I'm really glad you brought it up. The conversation took a lighter turn after that, and it felt like you had gotten closer that afternoon. Finally, the blazing sun began to set. To your relief, the air cooled down a bit as a result. You pulled yourself off the floor as a cove with a minor complaint. You go stretch your arms out, groaning and yawn into your hands. I like you guys. Sorry, I don't like you yawning. Uh, you glance out your window briefly, taking in the reds, the soft reds, pinks, and purples of the late afternoon sky. Somehow you had made it through the scorching hot day in one piece. Go turn towards you, motioning chin. Uh, want to go outside? It might be better out there than it is, than it is here now. Sounds good. I could really use some fresh air. Two of you took your time heading downstairs. You stopped briefly to grab a drink of water, then continued on your way. You stepped outside, one after the other, your destination being the familiar hills behind your house. Uh, this time of day, it was quiet outside. The flowers blew gently in the wind. Petals trembling, but stubbornly hanging in there. Uh, you felt the breeze cool your heated skin, and you relaxed your shoulders. Cove closed his eyes, releasing a deep breath. I really love it out here. Uh, uh, smiled as cool he was enjoying it too. A beat passed, but his uh, gaze had straight from your own. His voice was impossibly soft when he spoke up again. I'm glad I met you. You're really important to me, you know. Um, I'm, I'm just picking random stuff. Your uh, voice came out equally delicate from his, from the way his features brightened, uh, though you knew he heard you. I think Hope rested an arm on your shoulders leaning against you. Even as the sun disappeared completely and the sky darkened, you and Cove remained side by side as long as you possibly could. 
save it. Mm. We could play another game. We could. I don't know what game it was. So yeah, the other choice in my Discord that was um, was like technically winning and that did not have my input in was um, Genshin. So we could play that. It has been a little while or we could just play um, Minecraft if that's what people want to do. Mm. Yes. Games bugging. Um. We can
Okie dokie. you still like it. <laughs> so, I'm gonna be honest, I accidentally played some of the story. Like, a little bit of the story from, um, where we were last stream. So, but it's not by, um, much. That's not important. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, nothing's really changed. Uh, I've played on this account when not streaming. So, I'm pretty sure I've gotten some new characters from the last time I played on stream. Um, there was a new update to the game, uh, which gave us a um, new area. Um, I explored all of that today. Or earlier today. I haven't gotten this stuff yet, though. Um... Explore all of that. Um, I haven't done too much of interest. I got like new characters, but it's not anything too interesting. What is this? Oh, I know what this demon is. Okay. I was really confused for a second. Um, yeah, these are all my characters. They're not that high level wise. However, it does, you know. I'm just looking through this stuff because I want to see what is the highest of what. But, um, yeah. Um, I'm going to use this team for right now. Not enough to protect the most important things. That's true. Let's get back to Leeway to continue the story quest. I'm not going to read it out loud, though. One, because there's voice acting. Um, two, because I don't, I'm not feeling it. Yeah, it'll be fine. I character quest. Yeah, um. Eo has been very happy uh, about Layla's character quest. There's nothing interesting about the uh, After having experienced the land of the absentee Archon, traveler, how does it feel to know that our Archon and Adepti are here all around you in Leo. Okay, anyways, uh, as I was saying, there was nothing interesting going on in me and Neo's Genshin chat. We don't really talk through there. Also, Jean Lee, shut your mouth. I know, I know he's not supposed to, like, he's not really supposed to sound like arrogant, 
or like condescending, or at least I'm supposing he's not supposed to be. But he sounds a lot of characters in Leeway sound really arrogant and condescending when they talk about stuff having to do with archons. Uh, I do like Mossad more. <laughs> I see. So you're that sort of person. It's not a bad thing. But I suppose you have yet to experience the substance of Leo's 3,700 years of divinity. Organizing the rite of parting should prove to be an enlightening part of your travels. Leo is the most prosperous so of the seven nations, tall. defended by deities and ruled by the Chising. As such, Jeez. the diplomatic maneuverings of the Fatui have gained no purchase here. Ningguang of the Qixing has always been on her guard against the yeah. Fatui. That is in all likelihood why Child wants to make use of the Wangsheng Funeral Parlor's connections. Huh. What would Child get out of us doing the rite of parting anyway? I neither know nor do I wish to know. As far as I am concerned, the Fatui are merely financial sponsors. I only wish for Liyue's traditions to endure. These are the advanced funds that Child has provided. If you use them up, you can go to him to apply for any subsequent funding. Wow! Well then, let us be off. The first step in our preparations shall be to obtain some prize Noctilucus Jade worthy of a deity. He's having his grandpa moment. Do I want to know what that means? Oh, is he having his grandpa moment? Or is he just being broke? Um, I don't really know. We haven't talked to anyone yet, so I guess not broke. Oh my god. It didn't, nav it didn't navigate me. I guess broke. Welcome to the Jade Mystery, my good friends. Would you like to try your luck betting on Jade? This could be your lucky day. It's cheap and it's fun, and who knows, you just might strike it rich. Betting? No, no, we're here for... Um... What was it again? Nocta Lucas Jade, of Radiant Grade at the very least. Radiant Grade, Nocta Lucas Jade? I see. You're not a tourist. My apologies. He is. I have some here for your perusal. What do you think? The Jade Mystery is an old name in the Jade business. Just look at that wonderful quality. Rex Lapis doesn't often bless us with such finery. Go on, pick whichever one you like. These three pieces really do look pretty. Not like the ones you usually dig up. But how do we pick? Should we just grab one and go? Oh? You want me to decide? That is fine as well. If it were me, the answer would be simple. Oh? And that would be... I'll take them all, boss. Oh, you act with such panache, good sir. I always knew you were not a man of ordinary caliber. Oh, wait, wait, boss! That one didn't count! We need to discuss it again! Hey! If we only need one for the ritual, aren't we wasting three times the Mora if we buy them all? Oh, Mora. Hmm. <laughs> it is as you say. I suppose I overlooked this particular aspect of the transaction. If one must always consider Mora before acting, then in all things one is bound by Mora. Uh, what? All Mora is currency, but not all currency is Mora. What? Is this how the rich? 
rich live? Well, he knows a lot about big money, but not a lot about big savings. No need to waver. Even when I am constrained by Mora, I have ways of working around my limitations. Evaluating the quality of Nocta Lucas Jade is indeed very tricky. As crude ore, there is little difference in texture, lustrousness, and internal pattern between good and bad jade. Only after the item made using Nocta Lucas Jade has taken shape will you be able to see whether it is up to par or not. If you return to those crafty merchants to quibble, they will counter by saying that your crafting bench is to blame, or that your heat control was poor. Whoa! To think it's that easy to get cheated! But there is a way to truly evaluate this jade. And a true insider would know it. A fool sees the pointer and misses the moon. What does that mean? If you point at the moon with your finger, a wise man knows that you are pointing at the moon, while a fool will only see the finger. The patterns, the facade, these are all the finger. Nocta Lucas Jade is a mystical stone used to light up the darkness, and so its brightness is the important thing. It is the moon. Nocta Lucas Jade of excellent quality would have superior pyro affinity. In other words, the bluer and brighter the luster of the ore under high temperature, the higher its quality. I have imparted the priceless secrets of the jade trade to you. Now, all that's left is to put it into practice. Priceless, huh? Hyman's just said that we might never be able to use it again. We're back to buy some rocks, boss. But can you let us burn them first? Uh, burn them? You can't do that, my friends. If you, that would... Well, fine. As you wish, then. How about this? I can take a small sample of all three. I'll take a bit of a loss. Uh, we'll count it as a friendly gesture. <laughs> Don't worry. I know the rules. As long as we can prove that it is good jade, you will not take a loss. All right, take these as samples. I've carved them off with a knife and tack- Aren't these too thin? Even paper's thicker! No, even a bug's wings are thicker! <laughs> oh, you flatter me, but I have to be gentle with these rocks. They are my pride and joy. If I'd taken off even a bit more, it, <laughs> it would have killed me. But wouldn't something this thin go poof if we held it to the fire? It can't be helped. Trying to deprive a merchant of his profits would be like forcing a ravenous wolf to vomit up the food in its stomach. Nonetheless, under the right conditions, these thin slices will serve. What sort of conditions? While we add the high temperatures using pyro, we can use hydro to reinforce it from within. This way, the samples will not disintegrate immediately. Oh! Oh, sir, to think you were this learned. Thank you for your understanding. Strictly speaking, asking for samples when we have not yet agreed to purchase the goods is unfair. Trade in Liyue must be based upon fairness. Well, guess we just need to find a place to try this out. Oh, Paima remembers we once saw this big pot down at the Data Upa Gorge in the camp of the hilly churls from the Meaty Tribe. It's real sturdy and should be able to take the elemental reactions. Now, let's pack those samples up and make a move. Oh, yeah. Mm. Go here. This will be a little easier. A little further. 
further, but it's fine. I guess I missed all the dialogue, or there isn't gonna be any? I don't know. There's usually dialogue. It's whatever. Uh, well, there usually, there's supposed to be dialogue, but I guess it didn't. I guess because I teleported it, it didn't decide to load in. I don't know. It does that sometimes, or it doesn't load in dialogue because you teleported, or it has just been a like, long time oh, since I last set foot in the Nation of Wind. A friend of mine from Mondstadt would always bring a few bottles of locally brewed dandelion wine whenever he came to visit me in Liuac. It must be said that the famed liquor of the land of Pastorals is far better than Sumeru's frigid snake wine. Snake wine? That's the pot! <sighs> it looks like the hilly trolls are still using it. Pardon? It's a bit impolite, but we gotta cut the line. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, my question exactly is snake wine. The hell is snake wine? And their utter lack of like explanation doesn't help either. Like they just chose not to explain. Did my world level go up? Cause I don't remember there being things that were like getting actually kinda difficult. It didn't. There's it's still fun. soup in here. These hilly trolls sure have big app. This soup looks like it could be used as our hydro. We're ready to go. Use pyro to keep making the pop. Mr. Zhang Li said that the shinier and blue. Oh, use pyro. What? I don't have a lot of pyro. Whoa. Came from the first Noctilucus Jade. I ow ow ow. Okay. Hilly trolls are surrounding us again. Will they try to find a light? Such nosy neighbors. Let's take care of them and continue again. Let's light it up. I don't have any other good pirate characters for this. That light came from the second Noctilucus Jade, didn't it? They don't give up, do they? No, they don't. Looks like they're mad that we ruined their food. Sucked it up. I need the pot. Get him, Oz. Okay. Now that Oz has successfully dealt with the problem. Oh, that's bright! Too bright! <sighs> that was the third Noctilucus Jade, wasn't it? It was so much shinier than the rest. Let's go with that one. Let's head back to the Jade Mystery to buy some Jade, shall we? We're just gonna leave the Jade in their soup. That was rude. Um, I'm sure you do. Hmm. Yeah. You're back, my friends. I've kept the goods for you. Exactly. That's the no problem. If you have your eye on this one, you can have it. Then we'll take a box of the third type of jade. Done. 
All the same, uh, pardon me for asking, but I'm curious. Whatever do you need this much top quality Noctilucus Jade for? Hmm. I suppose it would not hurt to tell you. We need them to make implements for the rite of parting. Parting? Oh, dear. I I'd heard the rumors that had given much thought to them. This... Mm. This means this that Rex Lapis sorry. really is... Oh, it's hard to believe. Even though the Jade Mystery has been in decline, we have always been under his protection. It is said that when our Lord lost his way while going incognito in the city 200 years ago, it was a spoon from the Jade Mystery that he had used to sample the local delights. Alas, alas, all things must pass. <sighs> well, if this is to be used to say farewell to Rex Lapis, then I shall sell this to you at half the price. Are you sure? You didn't want to even give us an inch before. If not for our Lord's protection, this city wouldn't exist as it does now. No proprietor could earn money off such a thing. Oh, I'm sure Rex Lapis will feel your sentiment, boss. In the safe hands of the Liu Achising and good honest merchants such as yourself, I for one believe that Liu e will continue to prosper as it always has done. All right. This is Thank second you, my friend. I've seen outside of my <sighs> What's with me getting today? all sentimental like this? I'll practically be giving away all my fortune at this rate. Now that we've made our choice, let's take this Noctilucus Jade back. Hey, wait a minute. How you much said it was half price. Order? Not that we could leave without paying. Oh, right. I'm sorry. I must have forgotten to do that, too. Let me see. As I thought, I didn't bring any. Any what? Mora, my apologies. Another oversight on my part. Oh, that won't do. That's a relief. Have a look, boss. Is it enough? It's fine. Just enough for half price. <laughs> Though, to be honest, it'd be all right even if the sum wasn't quite enough. Well, it's settled then. Let's take this jade to Eugene Terrace. That's where we plan to hold the right. Look at you bossing everyone around. You didn't cough up a single mora. Hmm. It seems that we must. I will keep that Ow. in mind. Thanks, both of you. <sighs> okay. Besides John only just being broke. Like really broke. Uh, I don't know, ramen sounds good. But I think I'm just like just hungry, so all food sounds good. Or most food sounds good. Not all I should say all sounds good. Picky ish. I'm not very picky most of the time. Most of the time. But there are like some things like I know for a fact I won't enjoy, so like certain ingredients. Like um I like tomatoes and like sauces, but I don't like just tomatoes, so I won't eat something if there's like too many tomatoes and I can't pick, like take them out. Um, cucumbers another thing I will not eat. Um, and I won't eat really anything in it if the cucumber's been in it for, like, sitting in it for too long. Cause then the cucumber gets stuck. Like, we the taste of the it gets stuck. Here. I have already called for a jewelsmith to shape them into the implements that we will need. Ah, yes. I have yet to go and see child. I guess we can't do anything else. Also, is this why we're doing the rite of parting? Yes. I have already rented this location and have begun making preparations for the rite. That's right. The Liu Echising have acquiesced to using the same location. 
But when something this big happened here, should suspects like us really be at the crime scene? We might get caught by the Millilith. Although with that said, since we got back from Dwayne and Karst, none of those pesky Millilith soldiers have come chasing after us. Wonder what that's about. Also, the... Uh, Rex Lapis Vessel... Traditionally, we uh, call it the. I guess I'll start. I guess I'll start oh, right. uh, making more That's things with tomatoes in the for you since you, you like it so much. You know everything, Mr. Youngly. Um, so was this? No, no. But I thought you just said tomatoes were the best. Teasing? I mean, we haven't even figured out who the murderer is. But I thought you said tomatoes were the best. already have someone in mind. So now what you just well, perhaps said. Perhaps they already know. Surely they must have found all the evidence that there is to find here. These things are for the authorities the in Eugene Terrace to consider. Trying to help CD. would probably only add to their troubles. Before the rite is conducted, the Exuvia will be kept temporarily in the Golden House. Golden House? The only mint in Liyue, which is to say the only mint into that. All the mora that flows throughout the world is minted there. anything bad. Paimon thinks it suits Morax. But why do you know this, Mr. Zhongli? Since the rite of parting has the approval of the Qixing, it is a semi-official event. As such, there is perhaps each has their motives. But this is the capital of commerce. A little exploitation once in a while is not unacceptable. In Liyue, where the god of contracts reigns, only contracts may not be betrayed. I, for one, have no issue with little maneuvers outside their remit. Well then, we should go and prepare the perfumes used in the rite. Perfumes? Where will we get those? Do we buy them? No. Perfumes used to honor the gods must be freshly decocted. The quality of the silk flowers we require is also special. Silk flower petals contain a fibrous material of good quality, often used in brocade making. Its scent, however, is most elegant, and is especially suited for solemn events, like giving offerings to gods and adepti. It's time for Zhang Li's lectures on high society again! <laughs> we shall not speak of the details right now. Follow me. We shall go to the merchants to purchase our ingredients. I think I can get the game. So I don't think it's now, but soon we're gonna have to like negotiate prices with um NPCs to get stuff done. I might have to look up what's like the lowest we can go for each. I kinda wanna see what the lowest we can go for each is. Because if you have um more left afterwards, uh you can basically pocket it. <laughs> hey, boss, do you sell silk, silk flowers? Which kind? Ugh, you ignorant shop. Golden house maiden, valley weaver, and fate's yearning. One of each to start with, if you don't mind. My goodness, this gentleman is quite the connoisseur. You two must be his servants. Uh, please refrain from any further attempts to contribute. Now then. Please peruse at your leisure. Do let me know if you have any further thoughts. Silk flowers exhibit different properties based on how their environmental conditions differ from their ancestral habitat. Nevertheless, these are fine specimens, excellently preserved. Just look at the abundant foliage here, and these stamens, glamorous as a maiden of the Golden House. This strain is an evergreen, and mostly grows under complex hydrological conditions. By contrast, this variety thrives in any dark, damp location, often in large clusters. Morphologically, it is distinguished by the profusion of petals and densely packed stamens, though its powerful scent gives it away just as easily. 
Lastly, this strain is quite the recluse. Unlike its exuberant cousins, flowers and foliage are minimal, and when in season, it has a subtle yet enduring scent. It was first discovered by the ancients when they scaled the mountains in search of the Adepti. Silk flowers have all but dis disappeared from the wild today due to geographical <laughs> changes over Leo's history. Most are not grown by horticulturalists. Wow, a true connoisseur. Most of that was news even to me. I possess but a smattering of trivial knowledge. My traveler friend is the one to watch. They are on track to set foot in every corner of the world. Oh, Mr. Zhongli, you're way too humble. So, which silk flower did you want anyway? I'll take them all, boss. Again? How can I put this? When purchasing opera tickets, it is natural to decide based on which singer has the most melodious voice. The same logic applies when purchasing a pet bird. But this silk flower purchase is not an analogous case. The same logic does not apply. Perhaps you don't know. Tradition states that we should decoct perfume from different subspecies of silk flower when making an offering to a statue of the Seven. Rex Lapis will then make his own choice between the scents. Like several other tedious and complicated traditions, this one has become simplified over time. But this is the only rite of parting to take place for one of the seven in 3,700 years. As such, I do think we should honor tradition down to the last detail in this case. Now that's settled, a question. <clears throat> Do you have any Mora you on you? Broke bitch. You forgot to bring money again? Uh, if I may interject, did I? Yes. Gosh, well, why didn't you? It would be bad luck to say it out loud. Since these flowers will be oh, used I... to glorify our Lord, they're free of charge. Just don't forget to pass on my regards. I just accidentally kidding? skipped part, past part of his Why dialogue. wouldn't I be? I would be nobody if not for Rex Lapis. I'm really hungry, man. If he hadn't I'm written sorry. those poems in praise of my wares, they'd only be worth a fraction of what I can sell them for today. Huh. So much folklore here revolves around Liyue's deity making cameo appearances in support of local businesses. Thank you, boss. I think I speak for all of us when I say that your generosity has saved our skins. Our skins? You were the one who forgot to bring money! Please, it's the least I could do. Mm. I, like, kinda smell something, but I don't know if it's, like, so, food or not. So, now that we've got the flowers, how do we make the perfume? Ideally, with the help of an expert. Unfortunately, None of my acquaintances have personal experience in the art of decoction. Talk about first world problems. Hence, I need you to help by asking around in the city. Try the common folk, especially women. So this time we get to go around town looking for nice smelling ladies to talk to? Paima likes mm. this job. I don't I will I know wait exactly for you near the statue go. of the Seven. Meet me there when the perfume is ready. I know exactly where I'm going. Maybe we can find some good candidates at the Adventurer's Guild. <gasps> Let's ask Lauren. She's master of the Liyue branch, right? I 
Okay, actually, before we continue, I'm really curious on whatever I'm smelling. So, I'm gonna take a quick look and turn all this down. I'm gonna go have a quick, a quick look to go see what's going on. I'm gonna repost the Discord. Um, yeah, okay, let's get back to the game. Um, uh, it was this what the smell was, was right. when my mom repeated some leftovers. I stopped accepting commissions a long time ago. Sorry, you too, but you'll just have to ask another adventurer. Oh, it's not that kind of favor. It's just a teeny tiny. 
Okay. <laughs> wow. Just wow. Do I look like the kind of girl who wears perfume to you? I think you're underestimating the kind of person I am. Well, Paimon thinks you sound like you're a bitch. Amazing. So come on, Lon. What's your secret if not perfume? Now that you mention it, yes, there is something. What is that scent? Oh, it must be from the Qingxing flowers I picked on the way back. I forgot I still had them with me. Aha! The truth is out. Lon's got a soft spot for wildflowers. Uh, no, they were for medicinal use only. Anyway, this is a pointless conversation. If you want to know about perfume, try talking to Chi Mei. The fortune teller, right? Paimon remembers she smells pretty good. Thanks for having me. But yeah, no, the smell was just my mom had reheated some leftovers for uh, lunch. I'm sorry. Hello, how may I help? We've come to ask you a question. Perfume? I rarely think to use it, let alone about how to make it myself. That said, some of the cosmetics I use are scented. Perhaps that's the cause of this confusion. Since I usually set up my stall by the docks, I avoid perfume like the plague, because Celestia forbid those lusty sailors catch a whiff and come hunting for the source. That's the worst thing Paimon's heard all day! While we're on the subject, have you never heard anyone mention Ying Ar's homemade perfume? Ying Air? Oh, as in scent of spring Ying Air? Yes, that's her. Many a rich family's daughter has gotten her to make perfume for them. Apparently, her homemade product is better than anything you'll find on the market. Great! This is just the intel we need! Finally, we're getting somewhere! Yeah, that's why I don't like the section of the quest player. You know where you need to go? You just have to, like, basically bullshit around. And walk around. Peace and good health should be enjoyed by all. To make a if I can like provide common, everyone but I didn't with a life such as this, I will be content. Too, too long, so I said we want to live up anyway. Because I really like them, so. Sorry, I'm fixing my jacket. I have new things well, hello. for people follow you and found subscribe. Me last. I've been waiting Although for no you. one can subscribe what? right now. How did you know we were coming? Oh, I heard a rumor about a couple who were snooping around town looking for a sweet smelling lady. Actually, I was starting to worry you wouldn't find me. This is the ultimate test of my appeal, after all. Snooping around? Why are you making it out like we're bad people? What can I say? People love to talk. Maybe you ought to be more discreet in the future if you don't want word to get around. Relax. I know why you're no. here. You want to get your hand on my whole three in one go. My goodness. You have extreme tastes for someone your age. Maybe the rumors I heard were tr uh, Is that the best you could come up with? Even if you were genuinely offering perfume to a deity, that doesn't explain why you'd need three kinds. Sorry, your story just doesn't hold water. Yeah, yeah that's really, really rude to People assume. don't remember this tradition anymore. As one of my favorite poems goes, O oh, cherry tree, begrudge not thy blossoms as they are deflowered in the spring, for come winter, even thy sturdiest wood shall wither. That went over 
over Paimon's head a little. <laughs> In short, I'm happy to help. Traveler, you can be my assistant. But you... So, where is a good place? You mean Wan Mean Restaurant? Good choice. Let's go. There was something I was going to say. I can't. I've had a word with Chef Mao. We can start work now. Are you ready to please me? What did you say? I meant make me proud. As my assistant. Obviously. While I'm setting up, you can go and fetch some water. Try something new at the one minute. This water will do nicely. Now, I need you to extract the silk flower essence using a crafting bench. Perfume making uses an altogether different technique from alchemy. Here, let me teach you. Very carefully, take hold of the mortar and pestle. Gently does it. You need to keep your wrist firm so your hand doesn't slip. Now use your strong hand to stir it with a persistent rhythm. Keep going until the juice. This just makes me uncomfortable. You're a natural, like a fish to water. This makes me uncomfortable. Now take these and try it out on your own using a nearby crafting bench. Don't forget to do all three. They look visually identical during the essence extraction process. But I will put them into separate containers when the perfume is ready. This makes me really, really uncomfortable. And I don't know why, but it just makes me really uncomfortable. There probably is like a reason, but like not one that I can that I know. Wow, this is some exquisite silk flower essence. On to the next stage, the most important one of all. The essence is placed into water and simmered over a low heat until most of the water has boiled off. You must take care to control the heat during this process. If the temperature goes too high, it will affect the scent. So please, focus on controlling the heat. This is the final step. Don't waste a drop of that essence now. We want all of it in there. All three perfumes are ready. And you, my friend, were a wonderful assistant. A testament to the lengths you will go to for romance. It's so rare to see nowadays. Anyway, shall I give you a brief overview of each scent? I know. This first one is sweet as candy, straight out of a fairy tale. Younger women will love it. The second one is for those with more refined tastes. The first choice for daughters of high society. Finally, the third one has a soft but lingering scent, like a mist that captures the last light of dusk. Mature women adore this one. All clear? Don't get them mixed up now. You'll ruin the mood. Good. Be sure to come visit if you ever need help with anything, okay? I'll leave you with some parting words. One who tries to sail three boats simultaneously. <laughs> come. See, I... 
Let's take these three perfumes over to the Statue oh, no. of Ascending. No. I don't get why... I don't get when media feels the need to have characters that overall have very sexual undertones. Because I know that's why it makes me uncomfortable. But I don't I don't like when content and stuff Wait, I like has these sexual under has like random like Wait, random were, bits of sexual undertones that don't the match the situation. And then this, like where it takes too long to go to the oh, next uh, section of you're back. Don't worry, I haven't waited long. Compared to the watch that Rex Lapis's statues have kept over Liu, this was but a brief moment. <laughs> well, how can a person compete with a statue? That is true. Well, have you brought the perfumes? Three sets, and not one less. <sighs> Thank you both. Let us offer them up. of perfume. Miss Yingers, this is the second kind. The third kind has a gentle but lingering fragrance. Something, something like the dusk mist. And it's a favorite of mature ladies. Oh, what was that? That's the one older ladies like, right? Does that mean that Rex Lapis is actually an older lady? <laughs> perhaps, perhaps. Rex Lapis has taken on countless forms. Perhaps that really was one of them. What a shame. We only got to see the giant dragon form, and... <sighs> Let's hope the Chi-Sing can catch the real killer. We can leave that to the authorities. Let us focus on the fond farewell for Rex Lapis. We finished another step in our preparations. What's next? Next, I would like the two of you to help me borrow the cleansing bell. Cleansing bell? At present, a friend of mine named Madame Ping is the guardian of the cleansing bell. She lives near Yujing Terrace. If you ask her, mm -hmm. she will know what to do. Sure, but aren't you going to come with us? Ah, I have certain reasons why I cannot be there in person. Please, do this for me. Man, why is he gotta be so secretive this time? I'm not actually gonna walk all the way back. I'm just grabbing random stuff. is not enough. I'm just looking at random stuff because I don't know how to sit still. We'll focus on one thing at a time. Is there anything up here? To that travel guide? It's super duper interesting! I think I'm just gonna steal the books.
I'm just looking to see if there's anything like chest or something. I'm just looking for loot. Okay. Chest. These look surprisingly useful. All things must change. Hmm, youngster, are you here to admire the flowers? Ah, but it's a shame. These glazed lilies have almost all wilted. What happened to them? Back in my day, people said that glazed lilies can read human hearts. If they heard beautiful sounds like laughter and singing, they would also bloom joyfully. But if they heard too much wild gossip or slander, they would quickly wither away. So that means these flowers feel what's happening in Lilith? Yes. The rumors of Rex Lapis's death are no small matter. They are everywhere. Some say it was a Fatui plot. Others say that the Chising made it all up. And still others think that that which lies in the deep is breaking free. This harbor is like a mountain of dry tinder. One spark. And the fire will consume us all. Well, I shall say no more. This old woman's grown too old. Ah, that old trinket. <laughs> I remember it being here with me, but I've grown old. <laughs> I can't quite recall where it is exactly. An old friend of mine used to wear it on his person. Back when I was young. He saw me gazing at it often and gave it to me. But he told me then that if someone should come to borrow that bell, I should not be loath to part with it. It has been many years, and who knows how many times someone has come to borrow this bell. Still, though, I can't recall when it started. It's been a long time since anyone has come to borrow it. Oh. These old bones are so slow. What a weird thing to be proud of. All right, children. There is no need to worry. I didn't place the bell very far away. Eh? Do you live near here, Granny? Ooh, but this is Eugene Terrace. It's gotta be expensive. Oh, an old lady like me can't afford to buy a place in this city. See this ceramic teapot? My entire household is in here. How does that work? What? There's no way Paimon would fit in there. And why do you need Paimon to go in anyway? Can't you just lift the lid and look inside? <laughs> oh, youngsters. I simply mean that the bell is somewhere inside this teapot and... You are quite welcome to borrow it. If you can find it.
Youngsters, this is where this old woman keeps all her things. Quickly now, go fetch that bell. Whoa! That sounds like Granny's voice. So, this is her teapot? What's going on? Oh dear, so many cobwebs. <laughs> it seems I really haven't cleaned it in a long while. Sorry to trouble you children. Please help an old lady clean up. Adventure time! Teapot and the cleansing bell? Do you think this old granny could also be an adeptus?
is my favorite. Um, how many levels does this teapot have? Like, it would be nice if we had my favorite too. fight, or, or like, what I like the most of. Because I guess I would change my answer. Like, my favorite in both. Um, I'll answer that oh, in a second. Oh, you found it. <laughs> Youngsters are so quick on their feet. Oh, now, let me see. All right, that'll do. <laughs> Come on up. Um, God damn it. Okay, then hold on. Oh, in and out in no time. You an adeptus. Oh, I haven't heard anyone say those words in earnest for a long time. As to whether I am one or not, child, surely you already understand. Hyman <sighs> kind of knows what you mean, but is also kind of confused. Are you really giving oh, us the bell life. just like that, Granny? My wig for my family. Don't you think it's weird? Something's like just happened to Rex Lapis, and then we come running up asking for it? Oh, don't be silly. Leo Harbor has been through a great deal in its history. In that time, it has seen the departure of countless Adepti. But no matter what, we have always performed the rite of parting first before any other matters. To cry, catch the murderer at the top of one's lungs, but ignore the rite of parting. That, to me, is what is wrong-headed. Now that you have come to borrow the bell, I guess that perhaps an old friend of mine has finally decided to take matters into their own hands. So, why would? I be unwilling to lend you the bell. Oh? Well, if it came to that, <laughs> they would find a certain old lady knocking at their door. We haven't met in a while anyway. It would be nice to share a drink and chat. Well, you must have things to do. Since you have the bell, you should return. Oh, and do tell the person who sent you that... If they have time, they can come over for tea. I don't have much to offer, but you can always count on an old lady for a pot of tea. We will. Thanks, Granny. Okay. So, I keep getting sidetracked by, um, one of my neighbors has this, um, thing. It's like this, like, it's not really like a disco ball, but it kind of is. Whenever the light catches it, it reflects right through my window and hits me in the eye. So I get sidetracked looking at it. I haven't even answered your first question. Alright, so... Hmm. I'd say... Okay. So... Design wise, I like the way these guys look. like the tiny geo slimes because they have like the little plants. My favorite to fight are these ones because they're really, really easy to, um, uh, you know, incapacitate. I don't have random stuff in here. What is that behind him? Oh, yeah, I was... I've been fighting random things. I didn't know if Twitch would get mad at me. If I, um, said the other word. I mean, I guess I could have just said to kill them. They are easier to kill. But, um, my favorite character for each element... I'm just gonna start... Alright, Hyro. 
I don't have a favorite Ooh. pirate character, but if I'd have to pick one, it'd be Bennett. Oh, wow. So, Bennett is my favorite from? pirate character. Um, Hydro... Uh, Shing Shun's my favorite. Uh, Shing Shun can just tie for first, honestly. Um, I like both of them. I don't... Yeah, and still in terms of pyro characters, I'd still pick Bennett. Uh, again, yeah, it would be second, though. For Dendro... Okay, my favorite character... Out of... Okay. I... I like his design. I've never played with him though, so I have no clue what it's kid his kit's like. I don't know how he plays. Um, but I don't- I like his design. Um, I do have Yao Yao on a different account, but I've barely used her. I've barely used her, so I don't actually- I can't give her much input. If I had to pick one from the these characters, I'm assuming right here, not like the two that are unreleased. Because there's two Dendro characters coming out, so I'm assuming you mean the ones that are here. Okay, so... I'm out of these characters here, my favorite is, um, I'll hate them. Out of hate. all of them, though, huh? I'd actually, no. now that I think about it, I'd probably uh, still say I'll hate them. Whatever. I'd still probably say I'll hate them as my favorite Dendro character. Electro, um, it's between Sino and Razor. They tie for first. I like both of them very much equally. Uh, anima characters? Mm. I'd have to say it's probably between Venti and Xiao. I like Venti's design and his story, but I like Xiao's playstyle. And his design. But I like his playstyle. I'm kind of... In, I don't really care for bow users, though. Which is funny, because I do actually use them, but I don't care for much. My favorite card character is Kaya. Moving on. Um, my favorite Geo character is Boro. And then it's Albedo. If I could rank, like, from, like, which one I like most to which one I like least for each element, but that's dependent on, um, it's dependent on whether or not people want to listen to that, or if, uh, if people just want me to go back to the Arkham Quest. Yeah. I'll listen, you listen. Okay, let's start from Cairo again. So, I'd say it's Bennett for first. Okay, Bennett Benny's is team definitely for first. Uh, Shang Li and Xing Yan tie for second. Uh, Yan Fei, Li, and Toma tie for third. I know. Three for three. Ah, third for third. Um, Yoimiya and Hu Tao and Amber tie for fourth. Dea and Diluc are honestly going to tie for fifth. But I... They really messed up Dea's kit to the point where it made me... I like her design and her story, but 
let's just assume play like also put in playability into this. I no, I wouldn't be able to play her because of how they did her kid. Mm. I mm. also am just not a big fan of Claymores, and D looks overhyped. I'm gonna say it, overhyped. I don't really care for. Him. Moving on, Hydro. Um, Shingsho and Candace tied for first. Um, Tortellini and uh, Kokomi. Tortellini and Kokomi tie for second. Um, Ayato stands alone at thir in third. Uh, Yilon and Mona share fourth. And then Barbara and Nilu have fifth. I just, I don't like them. Um, Dendro, um, I'll hate them, and, um, I'd say Kah I'll hate them, Tainari, and Kahav share first. Kahav's not on here, because he's not out yet. Wait. But I'll hate them ten are and have share first. Kole Yao Yao and Kole Yo Yo Nikita and Raiju share second though. I'm gonna be honest. There's not that many Dendro characters, so they honestly just share first and second equally. Um because I just I haven't played with most of the Dendro characters, so uh, Electro. Sino and Razor are tied for first. We have then Beto and Lisa. Beto, Lisa, and Fischl tie for second. I created another universe and um, founded paradise. For I, Fischl, am the princess and de Go ahead, uh, uh Kujur, Sara, Kuki, Shinobu, and actually, yay, share third. Raiden and Kitching share fourth. And then um, Dory stands alone in fifth. I don't like Dory. Just period, I don't like Dory. Moving on. Animo! Um. Shao and Venti share first. Shut up. Uh, Shao and Venti share first. Um, Jean, Sucrose, and uh, Kazaha share second. Sayu, uh, Heizo, and Furazon share third. Yes. Uh, Wanderer is in tenth. He has tenth place, and I don't care if that was an if that wasn't an option. Tenth place. Uh, first, um, Chong Yun, Rosaria, Layla. Chong Yun, Rosaria, and Layla share second. Nika, um, Shinha. Aika and Eula share third, and then Chi Chi, Diana, and Danyu share um, fourth. But you know, is Eo's gonna be very upset because Eo loves Chi Chi. Like, there's a lot of people that get upset when they get Chi Chi in their 50 50s. Eo's praying to lose the 50 50 to Chi Chi because it's not losing, it's winning. Every time Eo gets a fight, I'm sure that's not Chi Chi. She loses the five. Oh, uh, she loses the fifty fifty. Um, for first place, I'm gonna say Goro, Albedo, and Ito. Only out of irony, for him being, you know, numero uno. Ito, Arutaki Ito, of course. 
So these three share first place. Eugene and Zhang Li share um, second, and then Noel and Nayvon can share uh, third. I'm not a fan of them. But that's everyone? Yeah, that's everyone. That's my ranking. There very well may be riots, but I don't care. I don't think people would riot over my opinion, Indeed. honestly. This is the cleansing bell. Hmm. It's in good condition. Let's place the perfume we've prepared inside. Of course. No. There's How would I know that the bell was with her otherwise? That's suspicious. But if you don't want to talk about it, we won't pry. Oh, yes. That old granny asked us to tell you something. If you have the time, you can come over for tea. I don't have much to offer, but you can always count on an old lady for a pot of tea. <laughs> that tone does not suit you. Still, her teapot is indeed very good. There are none better for brewing tea. When a suitable time arrives, I'll bring a spot of fine tea and pay her a visit. So what's the next step in our preparations? Hmm. Next, we need to purchase kites. Ooh, Paimon loves kites! Are you taking us kite flying? Is this our break time? <laughs> no, no. Kites are children's toys, yes. But they also play various symbolic roles in Liyue's rituals. I will explain it to you. But our next course of action should probably be to purchase the kites first. I have an audio that I keep hearing from TikTok stuck in my head. I think it's part of a song, but I actually don't know, and I don't think I can sing it. Ah, sir, you're here. The seven kites you asked for have been made to order. Would you like- Yes, thank you. It's rare to see customers who want to buy this type of kite nowadays. In the early days, we used to get orders from people of all walks of life. Well, this is Mr. Zhang Li from the Wangsheng Funeral Parlor, so he's probably well versed in all these walks of life. We've talked about a whole bunch of things while traveling with him. He seems to know Liyue's favorite topics, money and government, really well. But he likes talking about less useful topics instead. Well, that's because I prefer to share fun things with you. <laughs> he sounds offended. Children's toys are very fun things, that's for sure. I enjoy watching the children at play as much as anyone else. But there is more to it than that. Finely crafted toys are well loved by children, but this craft itself has been honed over thousands of years, and there is meaning behind that. I have made kites in Liyue for 40 years, and I am intimately familiar with the forms passed down from my ancestors. The meaning of these seven kites is far from banal. Indeed. These are decorations used in the rite of parting. The seven kites represent the seven. I took the liberty of coloring outside the lines when doing the insignia of the Animo Archon. 
As for the kite that honors the Geo Archon, one must follow the contract given right down to the last letter. These patterns are ancient, and you can also find them in the Golden House. Ah, Paimon's heard that name before. The design of this kite displays a firm grasp on the cyclicality and eternity so dear to the Electro Archon. These markings of tree and leaf pay due honor to wisdom in the passage of time. All this on a single kite. Truly astonishing. Justice flows across the surface of the waters. War rages like a flame. As does that which the Cryo Archon wants. <sighs> yes. These details are masterfully done. The compliments of a learned man truly are pleasant. Well then, Granny Shen, I shall take these back with me. As well, allow me. Hey, it's Child! He had a little slip-up, guys. I'm not going to tell you where the slip-up was, but he had a slip-up in something he had to say. <laughs> no way. I was just passing through. I see Mr. Zhang Li's the same as ever. When paying, well, when getting others to pay for him, he neither looks at the price tag nor his wallet. He knows a great deal about money, and about the trials of the common man, and just doesn't consider poverty to be something that could ever happen to him. Or perhaps, you could say that he cannot imagine himself lacking money. How has he not died of hunger yet? child. You are as fond of jokes as ever. Well then, since we've purchased our kites without incident, there's no need to take a break before moving to the next step in our preparations. The rite of parting requires helping hands as well as materials. We should be able to find some people near the harbor. Why are you talking to him, not me? Oh, by the way, take this bag of money. You probably won't want to let Zhang Li do the bargaining, if you know what I mean. Hmm, seems I missed out on some interesting information. I suppose I'll just have to find a more opportune moment next time. I have to keep in mind with who I'm talking to. Because some of Hiring them help? Really sure. But let me just say first that I'm a reserve member of the Adventurers Guild. I take adventuring commissions, but I don't do anything clerical. Adventure? Venturing into the mountains to capture a few crystal flies? Eh? That's not hard. Almost a bit too easy for a reserve adventurer. A most fair price. Let's see. I know, that's why I'm trying to... Five Geo Crystal Flies.
Which one are you? Out of curiosity. You're the most expensive one. I'm gonna come back to you. Because he's like the worst one to deal with and like the most expensive. God damn it. Help? Sure. So what's the job? Let me see. We are still no problem. That'll be twenty thousand more for a single trip. How does that sound? Done. No, no. How about... Let me think. Deal. Let's... I'm starting with the lowest, even though I know it's more than likely gonna get um, rejected. And it's just so I can finagle my way gradually up. A full day of odd jobs at Eugene Terrace. Hmm. No problem. Whoa, that's expensive. Hero of Monster. Well, you may never have heard of this hero, but it seems you've heard. I don't think it, he's gonna accept it. Oh, yeah. No. That's too little. That's not too little. I'd leave me with like half. That's too little. Are you kidding me? How much do we have to give you? That's, That's enough. Get I'm it. done. Twenty-five thousand. Hey, don't get. Are you kidding me? You're the st mm. I have five thousand left. He's the stingiest motherfucker I have ever spoken to. All finished then? Splendid. Any left? Do you think you can buy us off? <laughs> what? what info do you need? Does that mean you know what he's after? Yikes! You're right, Signora! <laughs> you both need to calm down. I don't know what's gotten into you. Just what is this about? The atmosphere got so tense all of a sudden. <laughs> Next, we need some everlasting incense. For this, we need to go to Boo Boo Pharmacy, the finest pharmacy in all of. Is everything okay? Everything is fine. I was just informing them that they need not return the surplus mora. Now, if you'll excuse me, I must be going. Simon <laughs> definitely felt like Child wasn't happy with us just now. I don't give a flying. Ah, he can be upset. How many permits do I have? Not enough for a wish. Yeah, I have like 20 so days to um get enough wishes to try to get the new characters coming. The two new Dendro characters that are coming after uh, this current banner. So, I'm more than likely going to be playing every day, even if I don't stream every day. That's a lot of streaming. I'm not 
ground. See if there's anything. Any chest? No. Huh. The reception is deserted. And it seems kind of spooky in here. Hello? Is anybody there? Welcome to Boo Boo Pharmacy. Huh? D did you hear that? Where did it come from? The reception, it seems. How about you go check it out and Paimon will bring up the rear. You're a fucking coward. What? That's oh, I was like, I saw the name and I was like, that's the name of a dead character. Why? Why? That's so random. No, it makes sense. Look, Eo, it's your favorite. Oh, there you are. But you can't even reach the count. Ah, Paimon thinks you might be right. Look at the talisman on her forehead. Welcome to Boo Boo Pharmacy. I am Chi Chi. Once upon a time, Chi Chi died. Then, Chi Chi. Something like this would be unimaginable in Mondstadt. Uh, hello, little girl. Do you sell everlasting incense here? Excuse me, sir. Did you bring your prescription? I... Surely no prescription is needed to purchase everlasting incense. It's not a controlled substance. Chi-Chi can get your medicine. But only if you show Chi-Chi your prescription. These are Chi-Chi's orders from Chi-Chi. Zombies are limited to acting within the confines of their orders. And somehow in this case, the zombie issues her own orders to herself. My dear Chi-Chi, we didn't bring a prescription, I'm afraid. But we do hope that you can still help us find some everlasting incense. Okay, then. How did you manage that? But Chi-Chi helps you. You help Chi-Chi. Only fair. Since when do customers need to do favors for customer service staff? Never mind. Just think of it as a peer-to-peer -peer transaction. That way everybody wins. Sometimes in Liyue, the art of the deal is simply about victory via mental gymnastics. Go to Mount Tianhong, find the Guizhong Ballista, and hunt a Coco Goat. Please and- I don't believe so. The Guizhong Ballista, at least, I have heard of before. It's a kind of crossbow turret, installed on Mount Chinhong by an adeptus in the distant past. An early mechanical device. Located in Chinhong Pass, it was designed to automatically fire at large monsters, protecting Liyue from external threats. Mr. Zhang Li really knows Liyue inside out. Apparently not quite. This is the first I have ever heard of the Coco Goat. The Coco Goat is a legendary animal. An adept beast. Did you want to add anything else, or...? No. Just that the Coco Goat is a legendary animal. An adept beast. What it looks like. Don't know. Where to find it? Don't know either. Very well, then. Let's start by investigating near the Guizhong Ballista. Perhaps we will find some clues. <sighs> what the heck is a coca goat?
look surprisingly useful. It's huge! Bye, Monkey. But how do you operate? Hmm. After a millennia of wear and tear. So what are we gonna do? Hmm. You almost make it sound like I'm some... That said, let me think for a moment. Ah, yes. Spare parts were made for the Guizhong Ballista when it was first built, in case it was damaged in battle. As I recall, there is a military supply post from that period somewhere inside the pass. If we can retrieve the spare parts from where they are stored... We may be able to repair the Guizhong Ballista. One just needs to understand the basic working principles of the device. So... What you're saying is that you actually understand the working principles? I have a smattering of knowledge on the topic. With the parts in hand, I could at least tinker with it. Where is that supply post? What do you think? Anything catch your eye? These parts look useful. One moment. I will try to repair the device. It is done. The Guizhong Ballista is more intricately designed than I thought. Ooh. It's easy enough. We simply need to do this. Look. It even has a scope. Over here we have... nothing. And over there... more nothing. Hey! Just what do you think you're doing? So you fixed up this turret because you're planning to do what, exactly? Not a turret. A Guizhong Ballista. Also, kindly state your name before you ask a question. It's just good manners. Ha! <laughs> Are you blind or something? You're looking at the leader of the treasure hoarders, old man. This area is supposed to be chock full of hidden treasures. But you can't get anywhere near them with this thing keeping watch. <laughs> it might look like any other mechanical device, but trust me, it's got a mind of its own. Last time we approached the mountain, it nearly skewered one of our guys. A few of us risked our lives to disarm it, which amazingly we managed. And then we turn our backs for two seconds, and you've already gone and repaired it! The next thing you'll be repairing is your faces, and that's if you get out of this alive! Tut tut. Vandalizing the legacy of an adeptus for selfish gain. Disgraceful behavior. It is not we who need reprimanding, but you. Big talk for a guy that won't even be fighting. Prevail. Uh, uh, like royal 
Do your worst. Oh, I did. I don't think that he won't move from the fucking get over there. Such a pain. That tingle. Fry. Fry. You're exposed. We shall prevail. Troubling ourselves over this rabble is not worth the time. We should focus on our contract with Chi Chi. Oh, yeah, that! So we've got the Guizhong Ballista working, but where's our Coca Goat? A search using the Guizhong Ballista revealed no significant life forms nearby, save for the usual wildlife. What's more, a contraption built using Adeptus technology should have no trouble detecting an Adepta beast. As Chi Chi put it. <sighs> Which means. The Paimon wouldn't go that far. We did something positive, right? <sighs> we won't solve anything while standing here and racking our brains. Mm, Let's return to Boo Boo Pharmacy, explain that we could not find a Coco Goat, and review our next step. Good idea. We did our best, and that's what counts. Please take away to some time. I don't know what that's supposed to be for, but okay. Out of you. Forgive us. We were unable to fulfill our end of the contract. We found no trace of the Coco Goat Adepta Beast of which you speak. <sighs> what a disappointment. Don't worry about it, but I feel very disappointed. Oh, poor Chi Chi. Why does Paimon feel so guilty? Coco goat milk is tasty. So tasty. Much better than normal goat milk. 
Only an adept beast could make such tasty milk. I'm sorry. I have a poor memory. I cannot remember the name of the milk. That's why I wrote it down. Where did I put it? Ah, here. This is the name. Coconut milk. The sound of almost disappointment. I owe you both an apology. I hastily agreed to what appeared to be an equitable agreement with this zombie child, when perhaps I should have undertaken further due diligence. Never mind, Zhang Li. You didn't know. As the Leeward proverb goes, all things are random and... Um... So how are you supposed to predict anything? Literally no one could have seen this coming. That's Excuse me, everyone. Did Chi Chi say a bad thing? Oh, Sorry, but Paimon's gonna leave the job of shattering this poor kiddo's world to you. No. Im impossible. Seems Chi Chi took this pretty hard. <laughs> Someone learnt a valuable life lesson today, then. Thank you all for looking after my little Chi-Chi. Might I ask who? Ah, oh, how rude of me. I'm Baiju, boss of the Boo Boo Pharmacy. I meant that Chi-Chi was the boss. Turns out it's some wacko who wears medicinal ingredients around his neck. What a sorry state of affairs. This little mascot is even more of a simpleton than Chi-Chi. I prefer to stay silent, but faced with strangers, I must speak, lest you mistake me for an escapee from the medicine cabinet, for I am a living, breathing serpent! <laughs> Don't mind Chung Shung. She's a good girl, really. As for you three, communal chaos causing with Chi Chi aside, what business brings you here? Do you sell everlasting incense in this fine establishment? Everlasting incense? Why, of course we do. Phew, at last. Things are finally starting to come together. Three million more. Top quality. Guaranteed. Aw, oh, too bad the chasing have taken it over for now. Security will be tighter than usual. Hmm. Three million. An innocuous number in and of itself. Though practically speaking, it could be a hard sum to come by. It's a crazy number. We'd never be able to make that much more of. And as for Mr. Zhang Li, he's around three million short. <laughs> this is correct. What are we gonna do? Is this the part where we go crawling back to child? <laughs> Coco goat. Coco goat. My sides hurt. Oh my goodness. I cannot believe you fell for that. Hey, less laughter, more sympathy. I'm almost in tears over here. Uh, thank you. That was the best laugh I've had in a long time. In return, I'm more than happy to sort out this mess you've managed to get yourselves into. Excuse me, sir. Dr. Baiju, isn't it? Truly honored. I'm Child, one of the Fatui Harbingers. Forgive my audacity, but I see a great many opportunities for us to collaborate in the future. If Ubu Pharmacy needed a stable supply of, say, coconut milk, the Fatui could help by setting oh, up a robust no. and speedy distribution right, network. Back. Strange. I knew the Fatui infiltrated businesses with seductive deals, but so much fuss over coconut milk? Coconut milk. Bite you, quick. Chi Chi wants coconut milk. Ah, yes, of course, Chi Chi. Anything you want. Thank you, child. I look forward to a successful collaboration in the future. I can give you a discount on that everlasting incense, too. Let's say 2,990,000 more. That's like zero difference from 3 million. 
Hmm. Two million nine hundred and ninety thousand. Also an innocuous number in and of itself. Though practically speaking, it is a whole ten thousand less than the original sum of three million. Well, now that this is settled, we must head back to Eugene Terrace. Mr. Child, Dr. Baiju, little Miss Chi Chi, see you soon. <laughs> ah, that lot is an absolute riot. Honestly, I can't remember the last time I laughed so hard. So, you've been eavesdropping, I hope. What have I missed? Yes, Master Child. They spoke of the Qixing taking the Golden House. Well, well, well. Ningguang and her Qixing cronies. What else would they be hiding in the Golden House, if not the Exuvia? I apologize, but I warned you, didn't I? As the old Liu saying goes, the walls have ears. I didn't forget it. Just apparently, canonically, you fucking forget about all of that. Well, as it stands, we've hired helpers, and we've acquired the everlasting incense. The completion of our preparations is not far off. Woo! Finally! Chat, there's a cat in my room. Well, Traveler, have you gained anything from our adventure Burn's so far? Not gonna pick up. Odd. She's a purr lover. <laughs> Which is it, I wonder? The questions that mm -hmm. such travels raise are ever so complicated. Well, I'll leave you to ruminate over it yourself. As to remuneration for your help, I've decided to treat you to a meal. Oh, ah, yes, don't worry. I will remember to bring the Mora this time. I didn't even click Tonight, anything. I shall take you both to an old hole in the wall, praised throughout Leo. I have a hole in the cat wall? now. As in a cool restaurant? Indeed. Let us meet near the harbor at third round <laughs> okay. knockout. She didn't want to be held. I guess that makes sense. That's actually really fair. I'm not gonna let you guys sit there and actually look at my- or take the time to process what my signature is. <laughs> oh, fuck. I forgot about that. I just dove fucking face first into the water. You know what's nice about shelters? It's like- when you get a pet from the shelter, it's like, yeah, uh, the thing about animals from shelters, it's like a Kinder Egg surprise. Because you're not going to ever fucking know what the hell you're going to get. Ah, you're here. There's no need like, to Like, you don't get to I've pick their names. So. Third round knockout is not for lightweights, like those taverns in Mondstadt. Here. The owner does not take such unorthodox orders as fruit juice. Uh. I ordered some wine-fermented sweet rice balls for you, if that counts. If it is to uh. your liking, dear customers, I shall continue the tale of Lady Mingguan's Jade Chamber. Hey, 
can yeah. see the uh, storyteller mm -hmm. here. Great atmosphere. Besides fine wine, the excellent ambiance is the reason why this place is so well loved. They're just, it's a little like goodie bag. When I say ambiance, I refer yeah. to a different sort from the one the Tevat travel guide uses to judge other establishments. As you all know, high the above the land of Liwa lies a pavilion in the clouds, a palace in the mist. What does it mean to have all-seeing eyes? This, my friends, Lady Ningguan's masterwork that bridges earth and sky. Imagine, the weather is clear, and you gaze down from the deck on the world below. Behold, the gl glorious sights of Liyue Harbor, stretching out far and wide. They say that when Lady Ningguan ponders important affairs, she retreats I can't to her jade chamber with none but her three closest confidants in tow. Why brings she these trusted three to sift through sources, dig through documents, looking for information? Piece by piece, facts and figures paint a picture on the walls of the chamber. But well before the wall is filled, Lady Ningguang's mind is made up. Having made her call, she has every last document shredded, and whoosh, she scatters the shavings out her window. Ah, oh, look at them, how they billow in the wind like a sudden swirling blizzard. As the fragments fall, Traces of text flicker before the eyes of the merchants of Liyue, like ink stains and white snow. The saying goes, the rarest treasures in the land are the words brought by the paper snow. For the words of the Tianquan have the power to move mountains, and all throughout the land know it. Okay, so... These are but scraps of that was paper, really, really loud. and yet they guide Lady Ningguang's hand. Such is their value. Um, Merely grasping if you guys one or two confused. of them will surely gift you a fragment of her wisdom. Enough to if you guys are confused on what people care, it's because she's the richest woman in all of Tibet. Tian Ningguang. Feels like we're hearing this name like, a lot. Nobody is richer and than her. Locals talk about her. The Fatui hate her. She's most likely the one who hid the Exuvia, and we saw her at the Rite of Dissension. Huh. Paimon wonders what sort of person she is. At last, I have found you. Oh, you have returned from Juayun Karst. Who's there? Hi. What you doing under my desk? Wait, I, gotta... I am not with the Millilith, nor am I here to claim your bounty. However, I am an emissary of the Leo Achising. My name is Ganyu, secretary at the Yuahai Pavilion, and I have come specifically to meet you. Well, in concrete terms, I am the corporate secretary for the Achising. At the moment, I am serving as Lady Ningguang's special emissary. Ningguang sent you? We were literally just talking about her. My apologies, you she who have returned from Jiayu and Karst. I am duty-bound and cannot extend my courtesy to you in full. But I have with me a letter from Lady Ningguang. She extends a formal invitation to you in her capacity as Tianquan. She invites you to her palace in the sky. An official invitation? Lady Ningguang said this. Invite her to come here. I wish to meet her. At the Jade Chamber, together we shall snip every one of these entwining dark threads. Yeah, let's just go about saying that out loud. You're on a roof. Like, she's on And with that, the roof. emissary who called herself Ganyu just disappeared. And she's talking to me. And so she's just telling everybody my business. 
believe it. We'll be meeting people that have way more money than my mother. <laughs> An invitation to visit the Jade Chamber is a rare honor indeed. You'd best be on your way now. But don't forget about the Whoa. Rite of Party. I'm three hours Once in. you finished at the Jade Chamber, meet me at Dihua Marsh. Don't worry, we won't in. forget. Dihua Marsh. We'll see you there. Okay. Sense um. word in a new. Chapter now, I think I'm gonna stop it. What? What? I'm trying. Okay. Um, I think this is where we're gonna cut it. So, um, thank you, everyone who joined. This is all for now.